Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jeremiah and I'm a second year biomedical science student at Singapore Polytechnic. Today's video is a special one as you're about to witness my first foray into the vlogging world as I show you how it is like returning to school during our obvious current situation. For some context, this was filmed on June 30th, 2020. It is also an interesting one as together we would explore the awkwardness of holding a camera in public as well as actively trying to conceal it so as to not appear completely full of myself in public. The day starts off with me arriving at school at 11 o'clock which is significantly earlier than the stipulated class time of troll. I guess this is what people do when they have to stick a camera up as they walk. Like all places in Singapore, there is some pretty strict security at the gates. Because I fumbled it like a total amateur, I didn't get footage of me actually walking through the gate, but this is me going through the security barrier. After holding up the line at the gantry, I start the long walk to the holding classroom. The holding classroom is at an isolated part of the school, it is essentially there for us to have online classes just so that we are on time when we have to head for laboratory practicals straight after. When you enter the gate and turn left, you first hit the engineering school. Now, usually it's packed with many cool people with their fancy robots and stuff. My use of the word stuff to show how much I really get the whole engineering thing. Anyway, as you can see, pretty much no one is allowed to loiter around school. My childhood mind springs alive as I wonder, we could honestly have a nerf battle here. I can't be the only one thinking that. I then continue on and make it to the science building. For anyone that has been to the school before, this is usually bustling with many people. You occasionally hear the noise of cries and pen scraping paper. Reason being, this is where many of us study. But as with the theme of this video, this place is not populated. To show that we are not all work and no play, there is a gym located just beside the study place. One must have iron guts to have the nerve to work out in front of the entire student body. All power to you, my friends. Through the science building, we go on the footpath that leads to the inner heart of the school. I am now heading in the direction of one of the most celebrated canteens in school, FC3. Although this is located and nearest to the science students, many make their way down here all the time. If we were to look around this corridor, we can see our basketball courts and fields. To be honest, we are rather lucky. Not often in Singapore do you see many American-style courts where there are multiple right next to each other. As I continue on the path, I see more people emerging. So like any sensible creature of society, I pretend to be watching Netflix as I walk past them. Now, I refuse to admit if I flake the laughter too, just to throw them off the scent. We continue on this journey and we start heading to a different part of the school. For those that have not been to SB before, our school isn't exactly flat. I was told that we were built on a hill but beats me. I arrive at the stairs which leads to a different section of the school, somewhere near our library. We have many bridges in the school, often characterised by their colour. There is a famous red bridge that is supposedly not from this world if you get what I mean. One would notice that this part of the school has got a sudden splurge of colour and honestly has more light. Well, let's just say that we've entered the architect-ish part of the school. Let's just say that the education here must be doing something right. The serene walk takes us to the library. This is admittedly one of my favourite parts of the school. It's a great spot to hibernate with your laptop and get some work done. There's a lick of despair as I notice that no one's in the library. Now, on normal days, it's so packed that it would be a daily highlight to get a seat. I finally arrive at the teaching block and we can now get to the classroom. Let's just say I'm thankful that the camera is not facing me as no one likes a sweaty guy on camera. Locating the classroom was rather easy. As I entered, I noticed the tables were split up rather well. You must have been the first ones to populate this room in months. Props to the school for taking the right precaution and for keeping us safe. The first thing I do is try to shape up the classroom, although, admittedly, I struggle finding the switch for the lights. They have this weird setup thingy at the teacher's table where you have to click some buttons and honestly I just don't get it. Anyways, I had a midday reflection and realised that my eagerness to head to school must have overshadowed the rational part of my brain as I am way too early for class. To compensate for the sleep that I must have missed out on due to this momentous shift in the space-time continuum, I head down to the nearby canteen to get me some coffee. I am not exactly familiar with this part of the school, so like a lost traveller, I make some complex turns and do eventually find the canteen. The jealousy in me grows a stride as I look at the scenery that is this study block and wonder what great Instagram stories people must take of them here studying. I mean, they literally have a pond and garden-ish meditation corner. I reach the canteen and you are not about to witness me get through a coffee order without both my hands. I take a moment to thank the stars that I am not at Starbucks as I would not want them to associate such order and incompetence with my name. Side note, I admitted it should have brought a metal straw, but for the sake of continuing the story, let's move on. I hurry back the same way that I came, and now I'm back in the classroom. I plonk myself in the chair and begin getting ready for class. Again, this single-handed operation is not ideal, but we move. The first lesson starts at 1, and we have chemistry. Lesson moves on like any other day. It was business as usual until the class collectively gets entertained by some rustling coming from the AC vents. You're now witnessing the first ever indoor school waterfall. A lame joke, admittedly. The class continues as some students start entertaining themselves. We get through an hour's lecture and I decide that I need some circulation in me, so I head outside for a bit to smell the warm summer breeze that lasts year-round in Singapore. 
I head back and I have another two hours math lecture. This is visual representation of my love for math. At three, the lesson ends and I pack up my table and we all head out of class. It is at this point where I pretend that my classmates do not exist, to avoid the stares of what is this fellow doing with his camera. We head out of class, walk back the same way that we came. There's some alteration in our path back as we're now heading to the laboratory. There's this rather tall, kind of cool looking staircase. I'm unsure whether to look through my phone or put the phone to the side as I'm going down. Honestly, I don't remember what I did. We head past some cool workshop that I've never been in before and we head up the lift. My friend and I take a step further by being the only two people in the lift, hereby signaling how popular we are. Our efforts of walking quickly to the lab session to be one of the first people to arrive fail as we take the wrong turn. We enter the lab, quickly put our bags on the shelf and go through our PPP donning process as I head to my lab bench. I like to make sure that everything's in sight during the lab, so I try to beautify my setup like some productivity guru during a setup tour. I then head to grab my lab equipment there's some short briefing before the lab session starts and here we go. This is the first time I've met this lecturer. There are two teachers in this class and they're located at the two ends of the classroom. As I am on the last bench, one of the teachers has a clear line view to me. Despite that, I try to find an angle which I can record myself. After doing this thing for a grand total of a few seconds, it dawned on me that this is a time practical and I do not have the luxury of putting up the camera and filming my own reality TV show. Hence, I switch off the camera. We get done with the lab session after one and a half hours. Usually these last three hours, but the class got split into two sessions apiece. It is now 4.30 and I head out the laboratory, excited to head home, not before changing my shirt. We exit the building and begin our walk back to the train station. Along the way, we notice that the school has come alive a little, which is reassuring. We head back out through the gate and go through the same story of trying to conceal the camera and trying to get out my card at the gates, only to remember that when exiting, we don't need a card. It's almost as if I've never been to the school myself. I get out to the station, which is convenient as it's located a journey to our school. I get on the train and find it weird that there weren't many people on the train. It's as if I reserved an entire carriage. Well, lucky for me. On today's ride back, I'm listening to a podcast and actively making notes on it. This process of unwinding is what I look forward to at the end of the day. It really helps consolidate everything you've been through today and it helps you prepare for a long time. Now, this brings me to the end of the video, but you guys follow me back to school on the day which I have live practicals and online lessons. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.